You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Holy crap. Ryan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I feel bad. I think, you know, they always say bad things come in three, right? Yeah. That's right. So then hopefully good things start happening. So, and I think it happens, you know, obviously a lot of things are going on. We have the world, we have the pandemic, we have people have their issues and, um, you know, with the stress and the anxiety come more things that you're just like, holy shit. Uh, you know, I talked about my dog one week mm-hmm. and I don't normally have any, I think in, in each intro, I usually am like, ah, oh, you know, I got stress. I got anxiety, nice few cigarettes, you know, this and that, uh, the dog, my dog Irv. And, uh, so it's just nonstop. He almost died. And then I, you know, I got him back to, together i guess just going doctor after doctor i have like four different dermatologists eye doctor because he went blind at one point um then he had an infection in his foot and so i don't know i don't know if the antibiotics are are working but you know he's in good spirits he's not in any pain but it just seems like fuck i got another doctor i gotta get a splint got now he has another infection in his in his paw and i'm just like gosh it's so frustrating And i'm like okay i could deal and then last week, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I wasn't really, you know, I contemplated telling everybody that I'd got, you know, a mole removed and it was skin cancer because I was like, I don't want to freak people out. It's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not honestly not worried about it. So I don't online people are obviously wonderful and they have big hearts and everybody's like, oh, I'm wishing you, and, you know, and look, uh, thank you for the messages. But the point was to just say to everybody like, hey, you know, I played a guy on TV. I I got skin cancer. So so can you? <laughs> it's just so people just take a look at stuff differently and maybe go, you know, I'll go, go I'll go look at that. So it's not too late. That that was the point of of doing that. Um, honestly, because I was contemplating not even talking about it. And then I was, and then this week, uh, I'm, did I just tell you? Yeah, I just told you. I, I was I, I didn't want to like surprise you again on the podcast. I didn't want to get surprised again. So uh, I and I thought about it. I go, oh crap! I should just tell Ryan right now. But uh, my dad remarried many years ago, and he had a you know a wonderfully healthy child, Ava, who's amazing, my sister. And then they had another baby, Leah, little Leah, and she was uh you know she had a chromosomal I don't know what you call it a a defect maybe I, I don't know exactly the it was called trisomy it's a very rare thing but pretty much you know most children that have this they die pretty fast they don't live long lives and um somehow toughest nails this little thing uh this little girl leah she she lived to 15 years now what that entails is you think oh 15 years that's great well it wasn't like she had a, a fun life. She was in the hospital her entire life. You know, she couldn't really speak and she, you know, um, she couldn't walk. And uh, she, you know, just a tough life. But, you know, my uh, stepmother and my father, they just, you know, they loved her with everything. You love your child. I couldn't possibly understand what it's like to um, deal with a sick child, let alone a child. <laughs> How to deal with it. A ch- I can barely deal with my child self. And so, you know, she was sick and sick and sick. And, you know, you're inclined, I think, as a parent to you listen to your heart. I was talking to my dad about this. And and my dad really has, um, I won't get emotional. I'll try not to. But I think he's just uh, opened up over the last couple of years. And uh, it's nice to see. And, um, you know, I, you know, and I've never heard my dad. I mean, he's always, he's six foot five, big dude, loves hockey, loves sports, work hard, never missed a day in his life. You know, it was, you know, he was, you just never, you know, and here's me who always falls apart and just, you know, so we're kind of opposites in most ways. But after all these years, she was really sick and in the hospital. And, and this time was different. This time, you know, she passed, she passed away and, um, it was like uh, a couple of nights ago. And, uh, you know, for many years, I just thought it'd be just best for everyone if she did pass. That's sort of like I, I and I and I and I say that in the in a way that you don't want her to suffer. I'm tired of seeing, you know, 
mm-hmm. th- them suffer. And uh, I thought, you know, it, it just, it would just be better. And you sort of like, and, and by the way, I, I live across the country. I don't see my dad very often, once a year, once every other year. And then she's been at a hospital that's outside of New York. And so when I go there for two days, occasionally I would see her, but you know, it's not like I had this and it's hard to have a relationship with, um, with her, you see her and it's nice mm-hmm. and you make her smile and whatever. And, um, but anyway, you know, she, when she passed, you think that, okay, this is, it's for the better. And you, and I do still believe that I, I think that now long story short, long story longer, my dad, I talked to him and it crushed me. I, I've never heard my dad cry ever. He's 68. Never have seen any kind of like emotion like that. I'm sure, you know, I know he does like he, you know, he told me about when his dog passed and he held the dog in his arms, but so he held her in her arms to her last breath, little Leah and, you know, stay with her and, and inconsolable, like, you know, these nurses at this hospital and I want to get their names and I want to send them something and, and, and contact them because boy, these, these nurses who not only witness death and sickness every day, but children, there's nothing, the only thing worse than sickness and death is when it's with a child, when kids are suffering, there's nothing worse than that. And uh, after their 12-hour shifts, they stayed with my father. And he stayed with the baby for another hour or so. And um, he just, you know, he was, he was there for probably 17 hours until she passed. And I got a call on my home phone. And it says, Eric, I still have a fucking home phone, Ryan. I still have a fucking home phone. I don't care. Fuck off. And uh, Eric Rosenbaum calling my brother. And I go. Right when I heard that, I thought Leah had passed. I just knew it. Because A, my brother doesn't really call me all that often. It's usually a text. And it was my home phone. So he must, I always have my ringer off. I don't have my, that's the one thing I do is I don't keep my phone on. Mm -hmm. So unless I see the phone ringing, I'm not answering because I don't hear it. And so he goes, hey, and I knew it. And he says, dad's awful. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I called my father and it was just horrible, horrible. I just started crying. He was crying. I was like, oh, what's happening? It just was like an emotion that I hadn't seen or heard. And it was just so visceral. And and thankfully, you know, over the next day, um, you know, he's he's keeping busy and getting all these things together. And I think that, you know, he's... He's managing, I, I think, um, you know, he's going through, a, it's, it's horrible. But so when I say bad things come in three, you're like, okay, you know, and they progressively got worse, <laughs> these three things. I mean, you couldn't, um, so anyway, it's been tough and I just wanted to share it with everybody. And, um, you know, I just, uh, this episode, I, I just wanted to acknowledge my sister, Leah May. <sighs> Man, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. Get all teared up here, but um, you know, when I, when she was born, I didn't know what to do because my dad was just uh, you know, they were beside themselves. They have this kid mm-hmm. who is terminally ill from the get go, so all I could think of was uh, I'm gonna get her name tattooed on my arms. That's what I'll do. Just as a, I don't know what to say here. Look, I did this, <laughs> so I got her name Leah and May on the other arm. It's so funny too because you know years ago when I. I'd be at like some out club or, you know, back 15 years ago, I went to a club. It was probably 20 years ago. No, it was 15, about 15 years ago, the last time I went to a club or a bar or whatever. And you meet a girl and she's like, Oh, what are your tattoos? I'm like, The women in my life. <laughs> like, really? I go, Yeah, that's my grandma. It's my other grandma. And that's my sister. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm really, really sorry. And uh, dad, I love you. I don't think he's listening to the podcast. I think I told him not to because I get kind of personal and um, I just was like, you know, you don't need to listen to that. And, um, but I just wanted to kind of say that, you know, you know, throw my love out there and, and just, uh, I hope, uh, I know that she's in a better place and, um, you know, 
I just know that a lot of people, you know, people lose children, people lose, you see it on Facebook all the time, I lost my dad today, or this is the 10th anniversary of so-and-so's death, and you just see it, and it be kind, of, kind of becomes numb, right? Mm -hmm. We see it, and it's not that we don't care, but if we cared about every one of them, we would go insane, because, and it, you know, and then all of a sudden, now it's, you, now it's you, now you have, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, I, and I think I just feel bad, as bad as I feel, um, you know, I just really, I have no idea what it's like to lose a child. No, no idea. And I think that I told him yesterday, I said, I think that this is the first time you're actually grieving. Like all these years you've been holding on to and it's been horrible. But now it's this release. Like this is a, this is finality, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I know. I, uh, I, you know, it's, it, I just wanted to share it because I just felt like it was important and uh, it is what it is. And I know that, you know, this show, it's, uh, we have fun and we have laughs and the great interviews. And I want to thank everybody for listening. I say it all the time, but if you're a new listener and you're hanging out here and you're like, I just want to hear Jared, I just want to hear Jared. And maybe you're not even listening to the intro. Maybe you just go right into Jared. But if you are listening to this um, and you listen to Jensen um, and you love Supernatural, I hope that if you like the interviews enough, you'll you'll stick around and you'll just listen to, because I think you'll learn something. I know I do. I think Ryan does. I think all, all my patrons out there, you know, we, we learn something from people. It's not like, oh, this big gas dog. I just want to hear what he has to say. I think you'll be surprised by people you don't know, because I am. I don't know these people that well or at all. And then I meet them and I learn something from them. And uh, I hope that you enjoy the show and you, and you keep tuning in and a big shout out to uh westwood one again for supporting the show they just bought the show and you know they're doing a great job and um as you can hear we have some sponsors <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic ryan this is, <laughs> we've got some sponsors uh content yeah but thank you guys and uh again shout out to all the patrons we just did a big zoom every couple of months i zoom with all the well, I have the, you know, there's different tiers of patrons. And so, mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know what patron is, just go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com or whatever, and look for inside of you. And it supports the podcast in other ways. And you get inside of me episodes where people ask questions, patrons, and what else is on there? Uh, bonus episodes. And, um, I do like these YouTube online request lines where the patrons ask, you know, play this song and, it's just a lot of fun and uh, shit talking where you get to ask guest questions and um, just a lot of other fun stuff on there. It's a big community. A lot of people become friends. Um, also, you know, it's funny. I wanted to shout out. I don't even have to do this, but, you know, I love this guy. Brandenburg. I'm going to say Brandenburg. He's got this. Uh, he has a coffee shop named after his mom who passed away, Peggy. And um, it's Peggy's Coffee dot com. I just wanted to say, hey, if you want some great coffee, it really is amazing. And many of the patrons on there, like Raj and uh, I think Marissa and Nico, they they all they get tons of coffee from Robert Brandenburg <laughs> um, at Peggy's Coffeehouse dot com. So they're so supportive, and um, it's a little ma and pa place. Uh, one last thing about the my dog. It was funny because I was like, you know, maybe I'll taxidermy Irv. I was kidding, of course. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't want to. And then I thought. Huh, why aren't my friends coming over anymore? It's like, well, you, you taxidermy your dog. No one wants to come over and see that shit. But uh, love to your family. Um, Thank so you. So sorry. Man. Thank you. Thanks. Um, it's, it's weird because you did sort of talk about getting emotional with your dad on this episode, and it's uh, about the same thing. So, in inadvertently, I guess. Inadvertently, this is just sort of a, a ter terrible, terrible coincidence but wow so anyway guys uh, again thank you please support please subscribe i noticed on, on video if you're watching on video the, the our subscribers are getting larger and you could download on apple of course apple podcasts and um, spotify and all that stuff and our handles if you want to leave messages are at inside you podcast on instagram and facebook and at inside you pod i believe on twitter um i'm doing a virtual con coming up zooms with me and welling and all that stuff and uh you find me on that cameo isn't that cameo just a lot of fun uh also a reminder if you like any merch or you want any merch we got great mugs and autograph mugs inside of you mugs they're amazing i just got a new shipment because the last one sold out available on the inside of you online store 
new t-shirts, ladies v-neck fitted shirts and sweatshirts and there's left on Laurel, my old band. It's like there's some albums and CDs left and uh, some hats inside of you hats and also uh, uh, towels, little beach towels. I love these. I don't even care if anybody buys them. I want these beach towels around my house. It's weird. He has inside of you towels. So what? Tough shit. Uh, also, Rosenbaum.com, my, uh, my band, my buddy Rob, my partner in crime. We do all the stages. We have a uh just one shirt available in there it's really cool it's oh, a, rosenbaum and dancing.com rosenbaum and dancing.com and there's that shirt it's really cool and there's not many so get them while they're hot thank you to all the patrons thank you to or the patrons thank you for everyone that's listening love to my family love to uh little leah and my dad and um stay strong and uh this this interview i i, lo I love because you know, these guys have been on the show forever, and Jared Jensen opened up, but Jared really <clears throat> talks about a few things that you're like, I guess I don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you could appreciate that he, he's so open and honest. And, you know, we're all flawed. Just remember that. We're all flawed. We all make mistakes. And when you could actually talk about it and go, hey, this is what I did, and I'm not proud of it, and I'm not doing this anymore – I, if, I think if you judge people based on the things they've done um, and not weigh in all the good they've done, you know, people do fuck up. People do say the wrong shit. People do, but to lambast them or to not give them a second chance. And, and by the way, I don't think he did anything that, that wrong. I'm just saying there's, there's in general people. Um, and sometimes people on podcasts, guests, they'll say, Hey Rosie, can you cut that? I, and I do. But when they don't, when they say, hell, I, I want people to hear it. I want people to hear my side of the story. Or I want to, I think it's just, uh, it, it's just nice to hear. Because, I mean, we're not perfect. You, I'm sure, I mean, there's so much, I, I fuck up constantly. I think you guys know that I am a fuck up. All right, this is, this is a great episode. You're going to love it. And uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for all the support and love. And um, let's get inside of Jared Padalecki. It's my point of view. Listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. What's the word, man? Where are you at? I'm, uh, I'm in my house. Go figure. I'm in my house. I don't leave this house often. Yeah. Where are you? You're in Vancouver. I'm in my apartment, Vancouver. Um, was this a temp apartment or is this something you've had for a long time? Both. I mean, when we, uh, when we, are we starting? You want to start? I mean, it? this is, it's, it's always starting. I mean, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm in my apartment where I got it. So I have this pretty awesome apartment in Vancouver. That's been my home away from home, but it started out as a temp apartment. The, uh, the owner landlord who's a friend of mine. Um, my, my friend Marshall, uh, he, his prior tenant was leaving and he was like, well, I was going to move back. But he has a place up in uh, Pemberton or Whistler. And he's like, well, you know, I, I thought this was season. Shep was, we were pregnant with Shep. So this would have been 2013. And I was like, listen, man, you know, like it, it, we're in season six or seven, whatever it was. Uh, I, I might need it for another year, maybe two years. He's like, that's fine. You know, uh, that's good. So fast forward, what, eight years later, seven years later. And, uh, you know, he's, he's the best guy on the planet. He's the nicest guy. Um, and he's sort of like, all right, well, you need to re up, re up. And so it became, uh, it became kind of, a, a more permanent, uh, living situation, but it's still, I mean, I'm, I'm in my, uh, let's do this. I'm in my, uh, master bedroom in my apartment, but I'm actually, I'm legitimately in a sauna blanket. I wanted to I was just watching that. I was like, what is he? Is that an ice pack? You've got a sauna blanket. Yeah, I have a, by the way, this is no, I have no affiliation with them. No like plugs, but there's a, there's an infrared sauna blanket from higher dose that I heard uh, Ben Greenfield uh, read his books. I heard him on a Rogan podcast. He's like a biohacker and uh, I'm a big fan of his, 
but he uh, he talked about this infrared sauna blanket. And so Jen and I are lucky enough to have an infrared sauna at our home in Austin. And so I travel with this. So I, I roll it up in a suitcase. And then, you know, if we're doing a convention or something in Chicago, we're filming in Vancouver, I'll bring this and I'll get to wherever I am, check into the hotel, and I'll plug this in and preheat it up. Um, and to what? To what? Does this tell you the temperature? All right. Well, you're about to see my bedroom. Uh, so... <laughs> I have my well, wife. it won't be your bedroom for long. Yeah, I think another two weeks. So you just plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. It just goes to the wall and plugs into the blanket. Are you naked under there, under that? I'm not. So you can't be naked because oh. it, it, it gets hot, right? So I'm wearing socks. I have a towel <laughs> that I put my feet in. Socks and sweatpants and uh, a little under. And how is it just filled with sweat at the end? It's pretty gnarly. Yeah, it's pretty, but you open it up and you dry it off with a wet wipe or whatever. I mean, I, wet wipes are hard to find these days because of COVID. Um, so I just kind of wash it down, but I'm closed. So you don't want your skin touching the, uh, and usually you go full cocoon. Like I'm, I'm a full caterpillar right. about to, you know, come into my own as a butterfly. But um, <laughs> for now, I'm I love out. that you're blanket saunaing. Well, yeah. we're oh, I love. Why wouldn't you? Is it? By the way, does it? Does the lethargy kick in? Are you tired after, or does it invigorate you? Do you, do you do, uh, need a shower after? I think it depends. I mean, I do shower after, but these days, I mean. By the way, remember that when Ackles and I flew up here on August second, we had to quarantine in our apartments for two weeks. Yeah. So, like, no going into the hallway, and I, it's it's really funny because we flew in and the customs agents we saw. They were like, listen, because he brought his dog up. I brought my dog up. And they were like, well, listen, when you walk your dogs, just be very careful. You know, the dogs can't socialize. Can Dogs can, uh, dogs can be carriers. Oh, um, and we, Ackles and I had read through the regulations, restrictions, you know, a dozen times. And we were like, wait, when we walk our dogs? And they're like, yeah, just, just be careful. You know, we don't really have COVID-19 here in Canada yet. And we're trying to keep it from coming in. And like, we get it. We get it. And so we told our production coordinator, uh, Fisher, we were like, hey, man, the customs agents seem to think that we can walk our dogs. Uh, will you look into it? He was like, yeah, I'll look into it. And they were like, listen, you can, but well, you can't. By the, by the rule of the law, you cannot leave. You, I, I couldn't go to my hallway. I couldn't go. My garbage uh, is down the elevator. And so I wasn't allowed to do that. Luckily, I had a dog walker who came twice a day for my dog. And she would drop it off and she'd be like, yeah, that's fine. And so I'd have all this garbage and um, she would come by and go like, yeah, cool. I'll drop it off on the way. Long story short, we, uh, it was sort of one of those situations where we thought, well, some people think we can go outside. Some don't, I don't want to risk it. And the, the fine, I think the fine wasn't enormous. It wasn't like a million dollar fine. If you were caught outside, it was, it was, you know, I don't want to pay the fine, but the, the bigger problem was we got here on August 2nd, which was a Sunday. We had to quarantine for two weeks till August 16th, Sunday night, and then film on Tuesday. So if August 5th or whatever that Tuesday or Wednesday was, I decided to take my garbage out and an agent happened to be there, they would have restarted quarantine, which would have, you know, messed up supernatural schedule and pushed everything another four days, five days, God forbid, you know, you take your dog out to pee at midnight and there happens to be an agent there going like, Hey, you're supposed to be quarantining. Like, uh, you know, here's so a, you didn't uh, do it. I didn't leave. No, I didn't leave. I you didn't leave. leave. I can't. I'm, I mean, I just can't even imagine. I can't I, in my I, house. I, I, I can go outside. I can do things. Like what day is it? Like I watched that show alone where they're alone for like 77 days. Yeah. On history. I had the guy, Jordan, Jordan? I had Jordan Jonas on the show who won season Peter. six. Yeah. Yes, I love him. Dude, he was, was a big fan. Amazing, dude. He'll no love you. Yeah, Jordan oh, Jonas, yeah, man. That. Season he's six. Awesome. He not only is he awesome, but he's like, yeah, man, I do these little things, these excursions, and I teach people survival. If you want your friends to come out, I go, if I flew you out here with some friends, would you do it? He goes, heck yeah, man. Let's just find a place. I'll come out with you and your buddies. Can, you call me? Can I come? A billion percent. By the way, since I got here uh, on August 2nd, I keep on saying that date, but my my Genevieve and our kids have been watching alone. And so they're like, and I was like, well, I know who wins. Like, don't say, don't say, don't say, Dad, don't say, Dad. Somebody killed a raccoon and a Tasmanian <laughs> devil ate it or a Wolverine or whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm just gonna mm. just don't even say it's just it's mesmerizing too. And like, you know. 
yeah, and I'm not. We can get into that, but it, he, Carter, though. By the way, my 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 dog showed up. I gotta give a shout out to Coda. Coda, Coda. what's up, buddy? Oh my gosh, look at the little paw. That, oh, oh my god, that is the cutest little shepherd. That's a full shepherd, huh? He is, yeah. So my dog, uh, my I had a I had a shepherd mix that I got from uh, the SPCA in Los Angeles when I was doing Gilmore Girls. In between scenes, I you know being a guest star on Gilmore Girls, like number eight on the call sheet, they were like, okay, here you are. We need your work at four a.m. and then you'll you'll finish that scene around like ten a.m. and then we need you back at eight p.m. I was like, all right. And so I went to the SPCA on Sherman Way. I lived on Fulton at the time, right up the block from uh, Casa Vega. And oh, so I yeah. just went straight up Fulton, took Sherman Way over to the SPCA and got Sadie. And this was June 6th, 2003. And she was a rescue. Wow. She looked like a shepherd, like really classic coloring, the brown, the black nose. She's a much darker, Look at I think you. called Brindle or something. Uh, anyways, so I got Sadie. And then last January, she was supposed to be or she would have made it to 16 in March. And then in January, it was just that time. I mean, she was a, uh, she was an awesome dog, but she also, I mean, I, I got her season two of Gilmore girls and had her for three more seasons of Gilmore girls. Then I had her for 14 seasons of supernatural. She went wow. to New York with me when I shot with Riley, uh, New York minute. She went to, uh, Virginia with me. So your best was, friend, your best friend, pretty much. She was my girl, man. Like I, I was single when I got her and she was around for everything. How hard is it? I, Listen, because I almost, I, was as close as you can come to to losing my dog last week on sa Saturday. 12 years rescue, best friend Irv. And I lost my grandfather Irv in November, named my dog Irv. And he's like, what are you naming the dog Irv for? I'm still alive at the time. Anyway, so Irv, my dog, all of a sudden had this infection, almost died, 106 degree temperature, somehow turned it around, the best doctors, and like I still got him, and he's in the other room, and he's like on a lot yeah. of pills, and he's not in any pain. I would not, I'm not one of those owners who... Uh, would let oh, him yeah, suffer yeah. just because I want him alive. If I, he was suffering, I'm, I'm sorry, as, as hard as it, as it would be, I would put him to sleep, but he's doing better. But how hard, when, when Sadie passed, how hard was that for you? I know Sadie was 16 and old, but like what? Dude, what it, yeah, it was the worst, man. But you know what? With uh, Are you saying Earth or Irv? Irv, I-R-V, like Irving. No way, yeah. yeah. So Irv, Irv, you'll know. Irv will let you know. You know, that's my, that was my thing with Sadie is she was, she had lost her hips, her back hips a little bit. And I had this harness that we had bought and you would kind of like hold her back hips. And then the leash was attached to her, like a harness on her chest. And so she couldn't pee, she couldn't poop, she couldn't yep. get out at night. But when I woke up and got to the living room here at the apartment, she looked at me like, what are we doing? And so she wasn't in pain. And then, and that was, that, that was for a good i don't know man like four or five months where i was like well am i being an asshole because i'm so deeply in um, love with this thing attached to this dog like am i being a jerk like i i need to let her go to the next world with dignity and you know her own integrity and um and then one day it just kind of like she just kind of like one day i went walked to the living room i'm getting emotional i'm already oh, emotional now with the season me too man i'm thinking about it right now yeah, but um, one day I kind of got up and she was, my couch here in the living room, I had to get ferny, uh, ferny pads, like furniture pads. I got him for too. Him. That's what I have for Irv. Yeah, he's having problems yeah, walking. And I put him on the couch. And so at night I would lift her up, put her on the couch because she couldn't hold her weight facilities. No, she oh, couldn't. facilities. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. So I was like, well, um, all right. Like, I, and she was really embarrassed by it. Like she was still mentally there. And then one day, I, like every day I would get up and she'd kind of like wrench her neck around. She couldn't move uh, her hips, but she'd wrench her neck around to look at me like, where are we going, dad? Where are we going? And then one day she kind of looked at me like, hey, buddy, I'm ready. Oh, um, yeah, there we go. Oh. Uh, and so that lasted for like three or four days. At first I was like, well, maybe she didn't sleep or something. And then probably like three or four days, uh, same thing. And I was like, okay, like I'm going to let her go chase cars in the sky or squirrels in the sky yeah. or something that was hard it was real hard did you did you hard, take her in were no. you in there because some people will tell me you don't want to you don't want to be in there and then some people say you want to be with there for the last you, you were there. there you want to be there yeah you do um oh you just want to tell irv like hey dude you've been the best man like my life is better so many people's lives are better because you're part of it 
And so I did. I had that moment with Sadie. Um, and my friend Kelly was there, who uh, Kelly's our on set uh, wardrobe, and she's become a dear friend. And you know how it is when you're shooting, you, they're like, hey, here's your trailer, and set is a 20 minute drive away, and we're daylight dependent. And so Kelly, way back in season one, she'd be like, hey, do you want me to take Sadie up for a pee break when you're on set? I was like, I would love that. And so then it became, then Sadie became like our dog. Um, and so when I was on set, Kelly would take her. When I flew home to Austin to see Genevieve and the kids, she'd go to Kelly's house. Like Sadie girl, man, I mean, I know I was her dad or whatever, but as soon as Kelly walked in the room, Sadie was like, Kelly's here, Kelly's here. So anyways, Kelly and I were there and we let her kind of go off. Um, yeah, it was really tough, man. I'm sorry about you and Irv. Uh, I know nothing's happened yeah. yet, but when it happens, it was a it was a really tough <laughs> time. I don't remember if it was a month or two or whatever, but there was a day when I woke up and I was done with crying and kind of moping. And I was like, you know what, man, my life is so much better. So many people's lives are so much better because Sadie was in it. So, and now it's just been smiles. But man, I, 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 I tell you, I could just, awesome. I could just hear in that story. You could just tell how much you love that dog. It's just, it's, just, yeah, it's so man, obvious. Cool. Like, you know, some people say, oh yeah, it was good. Like just, I could just tell. It's yeah. so visual. It's so, and, and by yeah. by the way, I mean that I didn't even she's expect. Still with me, she's still with me. Yeah, always. And I, I didn't she's expect still it. every time I, I talk to Coda, <laughs> my new dog, and you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, and I, look, I didn't even expect to talk about the dog and yeah, all this stuff. But hey, I, I love hearing it. It's a, it's a it's a real thing. And you know, when when you're in, back to your you're being in your place, you're. Supernatural. You're you're on the last episode at this point right now. What we're talking. Well, we started it uh, Friday, so today Sunday we started it two days ago. Yeah, because you made it. You posted. You said a post. It was like a really nice post, right? Yeah. You said something uh, as I head out to the first day on my last season finale. I can't help but be incredibly grateful for all that supernatural and the SPNF family. SPNF, SPN SPNF family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how much they mean to me. It's been an incredible journey to say the least. I, for one, am hoping that supernatural never dies. What did you mean by that? By which part? That was a long sentence. <laughs> I mean, the, the part where you hope supernatural never dies. You no, hope just, a, know, oh, hang on, hang on. Is it A, I just want it to go on forever in terms of the fans will always remember it in 30 years from now when I walk into it, you know, the, oh, I'm a supernatural and it will just always be in people's minds and, and new to new generations. Is it that or is it B, I'd like to come back and do a, a supernatural movie, or maybe we'll do another season someday. Who knows? Or is it a combination of both? Uh, yes, 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 and yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a difficult. I knew I wanted to kind of send something, and not even for me. Like I'm not a big I'm not a big poster guy, uh, uh, a posting on social media kind of guy. Right. Like I just lose track. It's not that I don't. I think there's a lot of value in social media. Like I I I'd be lying if I didn't say I flip through Instagram and, and Twitter or whatever during takes. Um, I just don't think about it. It's not something I, I think I, I don't know. I'm trying to psychoanalyze myself. No, I, let me, let me analyze you because I, 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 by just by knowing you a little, I could see that you're like, you're a family guy. You get distracted by life and nature and things. And, yeah. and just like, like living, you're more in the present than you are always on your phone where, Someone like me lately, I've been like, you know, I'm on the phone, I'm this and that, and I'm trying, hence why I watched Alone and cry at every season, and yeah. I call, I emailed Jordan after, I, I direct message him. This is why it works. Sometimes you direct message people and they're like, fuck off, or they don't respond. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you go, because hey, I have a podcast that I love, and I think, you know, people, it's an interesting, and he immediately goes, man, I love, I'd love to be on a show. That's amazing. Goes, yeah, man, hey, cool. I'm a big fan of his. Me too. And like, yeah, and a cool. lot of people don't know him, but look, if you're listening to us, listen to the Jordan Jonas episode. It's 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 great. He's a great guy. He's got a big heart. Yeah. And, the, and wait till you hear his story. I'm sure you know some of it, but anyway, well, let's not oh, get no, into no, him. I, I, I promise you this, man. As soon as we hang up, I'm going to listen to it. Oh, you'll love it. Yeah, yeah. He's he's hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good. I think, you know what's funny is that I, I'm going to, I'm going to, Push back just because I don't disagree with you, but I'm trying to I'm trying to hash out my own feelings. But you were saying that you know you 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 lived in the moment for a while. I want to connect you, more. That's what I'm trying to do. I want to connect more and, and more. Here's what I'll offer, and here's what I'm trying to deal with right now. You know, saying goodbye to a friend of 15 years, the show. You know, my character Sam, like I know so well. I was I was I've never gone. I'm going off on a tangent a little bit. I've never gone five months without playing Sam Winchester, not since I was 22 years old. And I'm 38 now with a wife and three kids. 
um, and gray hairs they have to scratch out with a, a comb. Uh, very humbling. Uh, <laughs> but I, I would say this, man, like I think as actors, A, and you know this more than anybody, when they say, okay, rolling action, you have to be in the moment. You have to. You can't think about like, oh, did I lock my door? Oh, uh, I should have called my friend. Oh my God, my agent. Uh, I was supposed to call him uh, five minutes ago. Oh, my taxes are due. You have to live right there in the moment. And I think it, it sounds like, and having known you for a while, you're that kind of person anyways. So that's your nature, but also your nurture right here. I mean, Michael Rosenbaum on Sunday at 11, 19 uh, Pacific time, you have a thousand things you could be doing. If you were just laying in your bathtub, you have a, you have a thousand, you know, a thousand might be hyperbole or something, but one, one thing, you have a, let's say <laughs> you have a dozen things that you could be doing. Right. Like, Oh, I got to send this text. My, my, I had three buddies text me when I was asleep. I got to respond to them all. Um, but now you're here with me and you're with me and we're a thousand miles away or whatever on a computer, but you're able to be present. And I think that's magical. There's a downside to that. There's a, there's a, the second edge to that sword, right? Where, I'm really bad, and you know this, and you've teased me, and I think we've teased each other. Like, I don't answer phone calls. I don't respond to emails. I don't respond to texts. I get them, and then I like go back to set, or I get them, and then pick my kid back up and jump in the pool. Right. And then like, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. <laughs> so I feel like one of these things is we're sort of blessed and cursed by this idea that we are good at living in the moment. And I guess I'm grateful for it. I guess I've had to become grateful for it because I don't have another choice. It is my nature. It is my nurture. Um, and so I don't know where I was really going with this other than to say, um, well about being connected about being why, why you're on Instagram. Thank you. you. Yes. So you were talking about your phone and being on your phone. And I would say that you're still connected to your phone. I would, I would argue on your behalf that when you are on your phone, even if you're among a million people, uh, there's a Michael Bublé song I used to listen to uh, season one. I was, sing I was, it, I was, sing it, Jared. I was embracing care. I ain't gonna sing it. I don't want. I don't want people to tune out. But uh, uh, maybe surrounded by a million people, I still feel all alone. I want to go home. And not that I'm feeling alone, but the idea that home. yeah, yeah, you're a singer. No, no. Uh, the idea that you can be. And uh, in the most crowded room and still be in your head. The idea that you can have a million things to do and still choose to get on your phone. It's part escapism, I assume. I don't know. I'm still learning. Um, but I think there's some magic also to I'm going to commit. I'm on my phone. I'm not going to send just like smiley face emoji. I'm going to write something. Like, yeah. Like, hey, my buddy texted me. I'm going to I'm going to uh, process that. I'm going to take it in. I'm going to think of what I need to say. Um, and I'm going to move forward. So I think uh, how I hear you 15 I, years. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, but you know, to me, do you know what connection is? This is why I think I love the podcast so much. Honestly, I love doing this because I put these things on and I've said it before, but I am zoned in. I'm listening and I'm enjoying and I'm not really distracted. I'm, I'm listening to a, a, an old friend and hearing a story about his dog and like, I'm really connecting. Like to me, this is, this is, maybe this is a weird way of me being able to connect to people. Maybe I should talk to my mom on my podcast or my, my, my girlfriend. I don't have a girlfriend, yeah. but if I did, yeah. I could. I'm not judging. I'm not inquiring. Right. Or judging. By the way, by the whatever way, whatever you want, Rosie. <laughs> but this is an email you, the email you sent. And I had your number. We, but you go, yeah, dude, I'm furiously, famously awful at checking my emails and even worse at answering phone calls. So let's text this shit. I'm still at four seven. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't. <laughs> you looked up for a second. Well, he's not going to read his number. But by the way, I would have edited it. I, Rosie, I was going to have my phone and be like, don't, don't, Rosie, do it, don't. Rosie, what are you doing? Inside of you is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Counseling. Uh, you guys know these guys. You guys know these guys. And so do I because they're incredibly helpful. And that's why they've been a sponsor for a while. And I think that this is sort of the show that. Uh, you know, it allows people to um, sort of get comfortable and, and, and sort of come to terms with maybe the fact that they need therapy and that they can do it in a private way. If you think you might be depressed or anxious or uh, you know, you're dealing with family matters or grieving, 
in the last few weeks, I know I know what this this is about. If you've been listening to the show, then you know that uh, I kind of know what I'm talking about. But you could talk with your counselor in a private online environment at your own convenience from wherever you're comfortable. BetterHelp counselors have expertise in a broad range of areas. I talked about anxiety, but there's so much more. Uh, people deal with trauma and anger and uh, LGBT matters, self-esteem. BetterHelp can give you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and you get matched up with your counselor in under 48 hours. Easily schedule secure video or phone sessions with your therapist, plus exchange unlimited messages. Everything you share is confidential. Um, and if for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, guess what? You know, you just request a new one at no additional charge at any time. I think that's pretty easy and pretty cool. Join the million plus people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp counselor. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they're currently recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. BetterHelp is an affordable option and our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code INSIDE. Get started today at betterhelp.com slash inside. That's betterhelp.com slash inside. Talk to a therapist online and get some help. Inside of You is brought to you by Quip. These guys are unbelievable. First of all, the toothbrush is fantastic, and I love the price. And you know what they're doing now? They're rewarding you for brushing your teeth. You use their toothbrush. It connects to the Bluetooth on an app, and it tells you, it monitors how much you're brushing and all this, and you start to get points, gift cards, other things for brushing your teeth. When have you ever in your life been rewarded for brushing your teeth? Never, and I think I deserve it. So you're a brusher. A brusher. Well, then, you know, damn it, you need to, uh, I hope you can get equipped. I'm going to try and get equipped to get you equipped. So one. you're equipped. Then you can start getting rewarded. Because, right. Ryan, you deserve to be rewarded. We all deserve it. Damn right. The Quip Smart Brush for adults and kids connects to the Quip app with Bluetooth. Track when and how well you brush. Get tips and coaching to improve your habits. Earn points for daily brushing and bonus points for completing the challenges like streaks. Redeem for awards like free products, gift cards, and discounts from Quip and partners. And if you already have a Quip, upgrade it with a smart motor and keep the features you know and love. Sensitive sonic vibrations, two-minute timer with 30-second pulses for a guy clean slim lightweight and sleek with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter beyond the brush quip has everything you need to build a complete routine mint or watermelon toothpaste with anti-cavity ingredients for strong healthy teeth plus you can get brush heads toothpaste floss refills delivered from five dollars and shipping is free how smart is that? Join over 5 million mouths who use Quip and save hundreds compared to other Bluetooth brushes when you get a Quip smart brush for just $45. Start getting rewards for brushing your teeth today and go to getquip.com slash you right now to get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash you. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash Y-O-U. Quip. Better oral health made simple and rewarding. Dude, so, you know, being up there, back to this, I mean, we're all over the place in a good way because I like this. I like it. it. People, you know, some people have said the conversations just seem like two guys are having a conversation or, or you're having a conversation with a, yeah. a woman or whatever. It's just like off the cuff. And it is. I know enough about you and we have a familiarity. But, you know, I'm also interested in like, I personally it gives me an anxiety attack thinking about being in my apartment for two weeks without going back to that without being able to take the garbage out without going to order food without or, or going to get food or walking my dog so what day do you start to go it hit me i'm fucked i'm getting anxiety i'm getting i'm going down a spiral i can't or were you fine you know what man i having never done it before we flew up here i was panicked because i also I, I do have clinical anxiety and i have for a large part of my adult life. Um, and I was like, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be a mess, which is also why I was happy to have my buddy. Uh, yeah. Seriously. Um, so oh, it's amazing. But I, you know, day, day four or five, I was like, I could do this forever. I mean it. If I didn't miss my friends and my family, I, I mean it, man. And I didn't know, I was terrified. I was mortified. We had called friends that were here and they were like, hey, will you put some canned chili, like 
like I was going to war. It was like, can you put some calories <laughs> in my... Get Jared some honestly, canned chili. I was so panicked. And then also I was with my kids, eight, six, and three, and my wife, and they were concerned. They were like, you can be all right. Are you sure you don't want us to go? I was like, I'm good. I'm good. Man, I'm good. Baby, I love you. We'll FaceTime. It's wow. great. How often and do you talk to your family? Do you talk to them three times a day or just once or what? I guess it depends on the day. I mean, I just lived with them for five months, you know, from March 13th to uh, August 2nd. So be yeah. honest. They're not going to listen to this. You were ready to get the F out. You needed a little break. Daddy needed to go to work I mean, and have. No, and by the way, that's not even, that's not a secret. Like, I, <laughs> a, a large part, it's more difficult. I say this, I mean, this will give me a perfect opportunity to, to, to compliment my wife, who's just a, a fucking stallion, man. Like, she just does so much. And, you know, I, I, I'm used to, I'm like, well, baby, I have to film and it's a stunt scene <laughs> then an emotional scene. I have to get there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a badass. And then I get home and my job is like, take out the garbage. I'm like, I can't take out the garbage. Like I have to blah, blah, blah. And then you realize like, holy shit, like she has no time for herself and still does the world's best job. I mean, I'm, I'm way out of my league and this is going to sound like I'm being as honest as humanly possible. Uh, I'm out of my league. And seeing her in her element and getting there in March. So uh, March 12th, we filmed our last day, pseudo last day of season 15, because March 13th is when all, like when Justin Trudeau, uh, the prime minister of Canada, fan, right. was going to make his speech. And they were like, oh, they're going to shut down the border, get home. And so Friday the 13th, uh, a plug for my movie, Friday the 13th, from 12 years. Yeah. Uh, no, we, so we ended up getting sent home on Friday the 13th of March. And, you know, I got home and I, I had just done, you know, we had had a, a convention in Vegas the weekend before. Uh, I had run the Austin Marathon the weekend before that, or maybe two weeks. Either way, it had been like busy, 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 busy. Give me a job. Give me a job. And then it was like, okay, you're home. And I was like, what do I do? Put me to work. And Jen's like, you know, make sure the kids don't fight. Um, you know, we don't give them snacks at this time or that time. Uh, they're gonna, And I was like, okay. And I was looking around, watching her do what she does. And I was like, holy mother. She's got a routine. Um, She's got it down. She knows exactly what's going on. Down. And also, as you know, from acting for decades plus, it's like, well, okay, I need, I need 10 minutes of my trailer. Like, you don't get that when three kids are running around. Could you imagine? You're just like, what, uh, Shep? Uh, yeah, Tom is eight. Shep is six. Odette is three. Shep, I'm going to my trailer. No, yeah. you're not, Dad. What happens? <laughs> he goes, okay, Dad, I'm going to come with you. And you're not going to go like, no, you will not come with me. I just want to sit there and cry for five minutes and then get back to it. So they, and they want to be around. They're like, dad is home. And so then I was like, the new toy is like, wait, dad is home. And you know, you have uh, three, two legged alarm clocks that are jumping on you and waking up. <laughs> oh, no, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. And at work, even if I think the first day back to work, we had a exterior daylight shot. And so I think our pickup was like 4 45 AM or something. Cause it's still summer hours. So it's bright in Vancouver at 6.30. So they're like, we need you ready by 6 so that we can go straight to filming 6.30 because the sun goes down, we lose the location. And I'm like, okay, that's going to suck, but I'll nap at lunch. There's no napping at lunch when you've got a bunch of kids running around. So to see Genevieve do oh, that. Oh, dude. I, you know what's funny? I, when I have a friend come over, like every Christmas I have, like a couple of my friends with their families and my friend, you, yeah. know, you know, single guy has everybody over the house yeah, yeah. and we, and, and, the, and the kids are there and I love the kids, but when they leave after like four hours, I'm like, yeah, they could leave. They have to, they could leave. And it's always when you were dealing with other kids, you're like, Oh my God, this kid's so cute. Or this is so cute. I could do. And you're dealing with it for an hour. And you're like, good. I can walk away now. But so kudos that's to your called, wife. That's called uncle man. That's called uncle. Yes. Your and uncle by the way, man. But your wife and all the women out there or stay-at-home dads or whatever it is, I'm, I, I'm telling, I'm not saying this to go, oh, look, like I'm just supporting. It is so obvious that women have, it, or men, or stay-at-home dads, you're watching the kids. There's no job harder. There's no, no effing job harder. I see it last night. I was in a Zoom call. We did a music, a stage it. So I play music oh, really? for, yeah, I do. And we're making a new album. I'm making a new album. My, uh, my okay. guitar. I loved your last one. So thank you. Thanks. Get an answer. Yeah. No, but, uh, so, uh, well, so we're there and we're on a, I'm on a zoom with a couple of people cause they, 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 they won or whatever. And yeah. they're on there. And the woman's at two in the morning in England. She's just like, she has her baby who's crying. I'm like, and I'm just like, holy shit. It was, uh, I think it was Carly. Shout out to Carly. I think it was Carly. Hi, but, Carly. but anyway, holy shit. Like, <laughs> like if when you're married 
you know, someone works, some both work. I, I don't, for, it's so terrifying. I look at my parents and how they did it. And like, you know, I always say, I've come to a conclusion. I've worked my ass off in therapy. And I, you know what? Hey, I love you guys. You did the best that you could. I'm not saying you were the best parents. By far. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. did the best that you could or you knew how to do. But for all those parents out there, I, I just like, yeah, your wife, I, I, it's, that's terrifying. It's so hard. It's like, you got three kids bouncing around. You gotta be on, I would have an anxiety attack cause I'm like a OCD. Like I'd want to know where everybody is. Don't, don't we can't put that there. Yeah. Wait, 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 put that down. You're going to hurt yourself. I always would think someone's going to start a fire or something. Yeah. And you also feel like, well, I, I feel like you as an adult, you know, you're like, okay, well, I see them doing something wrong. I better correct them every single time. Forgetting like, Hey, they're three. They're figuring shit out. Like, don't, don't terrorize them. Here's something funny talking about therapy and talking about uh, your parents being the best or the worst is I, I, I've seen a psychiatrist. I've been very public and I suggested and recommend it to every human being on the planet. Yep. Um, and without getting into too much detail, I had a conversation. My psychiatrist doesn't talk a lot. Like he more forces me to suss it out myself and to admit things to myself before suggesting them, you know? Um, and one time, so he doesn't speak a whole lot. And then one time I'm on his couch and I'm kind of pontificating and I was like, I'm just really afraid I'm going to fuck up my kids. And he goes, oh, you will. And A, he talked. And B, I was like, that's not, what, that's not what I'm, like, that's not what I'm paying you to say. Um, but it was so comforting because we went into it then. And he's like, you know what? If you're the worst parent on the planet, it's pretty obvious how you'll, you know, affect them in negative ways in the future. And if you're, but people don't think about this. If you're the best parent on the planet, then in some sense, they live in your shadow. And they go like, I'm not, I'm, I can't make my parents happy because they were so they did the best they could dude um you know my parents my mom's birthday was yesterday happy birthday mom, happy birthday, uh, mom. Watches, but um you know they they went and met for a social distance uh there's a great place called salt lake barbecue and i love going there it's just like halfway between san antonio where my parents live where i grew up and austin where i live my brother lives and our families um and they met for a social distanced uh kind of birthday brunch and um you know, they're, they're, they're great. I was enormously blessed, but I've been said, no matter who's in your life, if someone's in that position in your life, there are going to be some things that if you have the wherewithal to look into it and to have professional help to look into the way you were raised, the way you grew up, your thought processes, then you're going to go like, Oh, wow. I guess I, I guess I do like, here's something funny. Um, my buddy was asking me about the difference between a psychologist and psychiatrist. And I say this with no medical training, just with, uh, you know, experience with psychologists and psychiatrists. And I was like, so the best way, and this was on the moment, I'm really proud of myself, even though it's probably outrageously wrong. <laughs> if we were a psychologist, psychiatrist. So psychiatrists are more high ideal. Psychologists are very actionable. So my analogy, and again, maybe I'll get roasted, but fuck it. I'm going to say it. It's like a psychologist goes, if you say, if you say to your psychologist, like, Hey, um, I go home at night and I eat a tub of ice cream, but I'm struggling with my weight. Then they'll say like, Hey, well, you know what? Don't eat a tub of ice cream or buy lower fat ice cream or eat half a tub, like separate it into containers. It's really actionable. It's very, make your bed. Right. It's very, take the stairs. Okay. Don't, don't drive around for five minutes looking for a close parking spot. Park at the first park at the farthest spot you can and walk. But what would a psychiatrist say? So like a psychiatrist, if you're like, hey, I go home, I eat a tub of ice cream, they'll be like, why? Like, why do you want the ice cream? Were you rewarded as a child with uh, desserts? You know, if you got good grades, would you get uh, an ice cream date or a plate of nachos or some cookies? Like, is it, it even as an adult, you don't realize that, I'm, you know, I'm 38 with three kids of my own. And part of me, I love candy. I think everybody I know knows that. I love candy and I eat candy. And I remember like candy to me is going to theme parks. <laughs> And here, my dad goes like, here's two bucks. And so I go to the, the arcade and get a bunch of tokens on foosball or, or skee-ball or whatever. Um, and because I knew I could get candy. I, so for me, like candy is a reward. Right. And my, buddy, my new buddy, Keegan Allen, who's playing my brother in Walker, is uh, he's, he's very right. And I tease him all the time. He's very like, dude, don't do sugar. Like sugar will mess you up. And I'm like, fine, I'm going to go have a Snickers or whatever it is. I don't like chocolate, but I'll have some Sour Patch Kids. But... For me, sugar and nachos 
or whatever is a treat because we couldn't really afford it growing up. Like, hey, wow. here's all the barbecue and tech specs in the world. But, you know, we get good grades. We win a basketball game. I was like, hey, I'm going to make you some cookies. Here's some ice cream. And so I have this. So the psychologist is like, well, if you're struggling with weight, take the stairs, park far away, don't eat a full gallon of ice cream. Psychiatrist is like. Psychiatrist is like, why do you think you're doing that? Right. You know, you know what I say? I always just thought the difference was because I have a psychiatrist and a psychologist, but I don't, you know, it's not like I talk to them like every, every week or, but it's like, you know, intermittent, I would say intermittent, but I try to, I need to call them is what I'm saying. Do it. So my, my psychiatrist, psychologist sits there and she's amazing. Sandy, she's been on the show. I had her on the show. She's amazing. And she'll talk, she is, so, I mean, and you're right. A good one will sit there and go, okay, well, um, well, why do you, th why it was, it was different because it's my psychologist, she was always like, well, she's also a. Um, behavioralist behavior uh sure. yeah, what do you yeah. call it i don't even know right, yeah. cbt what i don't even know and she will say you know she will talk about things and why do you think that happens well why do you think you do that she, it's different where the psychiatrist is just, just like they can prescribe you drugs psychologists can psychiatrists can prescribe oh, drugs really? that's the big thing and also the psychiatrist you ever notice at least for me psychologist is an hour meeting psychiatrist 15 minutes they just evaluate. They're like, okay, how's everything going? Okay, great. I'm like, I heard about this tr drug gabapentin or uh, this uh, colosopridol uh, or this uh, bondrocognitin. It really gives you, it's like, it's like uh, well, we could try that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just, so that's how I always think. A psychiatrist gets you the drug. Psychologist kind of like talks you through shit. Now, I've, I've done a lot of... When, when I'm here, by the way, I, lo I love this conversation. It really, you just, I love all the conversations. Well, I was just, I you call. I, I just came to work and he's like, yeah, I just talked to Rosenbaum. And I was like, well, he didn't fucking call me. No, I was calling both of you. I know. You don't, don't answer my yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. You don't answer your phone. Me. Come on, man. That, you text it's me. true. But I will say this. You're incredible. I'm just saying this. You're incredibly enjoyable. Like while you were talking the other minute, you have like my energy in a way because you're like excited. You want to talk about something. And it just, I like it. It's easy. I can just like talk to you forever. I, I, so back to. Uh, if you were in person, I'd kiss you with tongue right now. I know. Oh. Well, a COVID kiss. It'd be a six, <laughs> six. Uh, it'd be just like a Buffalo Bill kiss. Just, oh, right, right, right. I, I can do that too. So did you have anxiety? Because look, you had obviously good parents, you're saying. My, my, yeah. I'm not, you know, my parents, again, they tried the best they could, but it was just more of a thing where my dad was like, the kind of guy no therapy no emotions no yeah. never seen him cry nothing and the other day i asked him because you know my half sister uh he remarried and he had a daughter and she's been she's had this chromosomal defect for okay she's lived she's just she's a trooper but she's like 15 and she's incredibly like she's not gonna make it she's not gonna and she should have like passed when she was born the fact that she's lived this long and she's just not lived a good life and it's always been in, you know, and she's been in the hospital and not for lack of, they've done my parent, you know, my mom, my dad, and my, my stepmom, they did everything they could. The best doctors, there was nothing, she, there's nothing that could help this disease. Yeah, it was yeah. just, and so he's been struggling for a long time and it's been really hard. But like, you know, I said to him, I said, I've never seen you cry. I go, you know, blah, blah. He goes, I cry. And I just, I, that was all he had to say. Yeah, I know. And I was just like, it's sort of like for once in my life, I feel like, and I know this is about you, but this podcast is about us. It's, about me. it's like my it's father, it's like my father and I, after all these years have sort of come to a place where he respects. I'm sort of like, you know, I'm an entertainer. I'm all over the place. I'm funny. Maybe I do all these things. I'm just way, the point is I'm different than him. And he's finally, I finally feel like he's accepting me for me. And, and at the same time, I'm sort of doing the same thing, but also watching him, you know, be co more compassionate. Like, so there's, there's this appreciation. So that's all I'll say about that. But anxiety, did you suffer anxiety your whole life? I don't say suffer. Not anymore. Do you, are you uh, on medications for it? I'm not. Um, I, uh, well, not even, not about, uh, my point is, is that I, I do believe uh, in the power of, um, love self-fulfilling prophecies. So if I say to myself, like I'm suffering from depression, I'm suffering from anxiety, I'm suffering from this, then I'm the victim and I can't do anything about it. If I say to myself, Hey, all, if I said to myself this man for those two weeks in quarantine, I suffered from anxiety, 
I, I had a, I have a, a Garmin on my arm and it tracks your steps. I'd have 20,000 steps someday in a three bedroom apartment. And I don't say suffer. I fucking hate that word. Um, and here's my favorite saying, pain is mandatory. Suffering is optional. So you will deal with pain. Pain is, is universal. There's not a human being on the planet, whether they're born a billionaire or born, you know, in, in the, uh, you know, in a terrible, terrible situation, pain's going to happen. You've dealt with pain. You will deal with pain. I've dealt with pain. I will deal with pain. It's my choice whether or not to accept it and try and deal with it or to allow it to make me suffer. So suffering is my option. So I don't suffer from anxiety. I've dealt with anxiety. I have a relationship with anxiety, but these days I, I see it as a school bully and I deal with it. I, I love that. Know. I love it, Jared. I think it's, it's so important because I remember my, my a psychologist said, yeah. Hey, anxiety could be here. Anxiety is in the back seat right now. I've said this before. It says in the back seat, but you're driving. So you can know it's there and you go, Hey, what's up now? Fuck you. I'm driving right now. I know you're yeah. there, but you don't, you don't get to drive this car. I feel like there's a podcast I listen to or something where somebody's talking about death in the same way and how they were terrified and mortified of death and their mortality. And the fact that, Oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to wake up one day or go for a walk. And they were like, and now they've become uh, a welcome friend. Like they're in the passenger seat and they'll say things and they're that friend that you disagree with, but you love them. And you're like, hey, you know, death is telling you like, hey, this is all going to end. This could be the last time you take a right at a stop sign. Hey, this could be the last time you have a Diet Coke. Maybe a, a piece of rib gets caught in your throat. And you either believe that person. And I've met a lot of people who have had some pretty severe, who have dealt with, not suffered, who have dealt with pretty severe anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts. And I get... Hold on a second. Hey, quiet! Is that your pup? Is that Irv? That's the puppy. Yeah, I have, I have a puppy a too. Cam, little cameo, man. Hey, yeah, Irv. Yeah. He's like, I heard Coda was on the podcast. When's <laughs> well, my turn? Well, Irv's also 90% deaf. So the neighbors probably think I'm screaming at him. I'm going, Irv, get over here. But I, yeah, he can't he, hear. I'm not yelling whisper. at him. <laughs> Go ahead. He's hearing a whisper. But I guess I just try, when, when people are really dealing with it in a big, big way, there's some bit, and I've used my own life. This isn't me like proselytizing, like, well, if you take this pill or practice this mantra, but I have found that accepting that it's part of my life makes it welcome. Like if I wake up and I don't feel anxiety these days, I'm like, what's wrong? Like, what am I not aware of? You know, honestly, honestly that's, God, that's smart, it's, taken man. Lot, it's taken a lot of money, a lot of professional help, a lot, many, many years. But these days, and not that I don't falter, not that I don't sometimes just get in my room and cry or something, but, uh, by and large, I remind myself, so I watched Genevieve go through natural childbirth twice. Ooh. She said up to it three times. We had some issues with our eight-year-old. His cord was around his neck twice. And it was kinked, and we ended up going to the hospital then. But then I watched her two times give natural childbirth, you know, no Advil. And she had, she didn't say those exact words, but I got that she was like, you know, when they would, when, when there would be contractions, she would sit there and breathe through it. She's a fucking doll, boss, man. But she would breathe through it. And ultimately, after the fact, she was sort of like, you know, I knew it was going to hurt. I knew it was going to go away. And there's a great, it's not roomy, it's Reiki, maybe. There's a great quote about something, um, you know, deal with the highs, deal with the lows. I'm bastardizing. But no feeling is final. Um, so accepting that, accepting there will be pain. Like, that's yeah. part of life. Life can suck for all of us. And life can be amazing for all of us if we choose to focus on that. But dealing with like, you know, no feeling is final. This is painful. You don't have to suffer. Inside of you is brought to you by Raycon. I think everybody's using these earbuds. Every time I say it, I'm like, yeah, one of my sponsors is Raycon. They're like, yeah, they're awesome. I mean, a lot of my friends have these earbuds that I didn't know about until I got them. And most earbuds don't feel comfortable for me. No, me neither. And they're, and they're expensive as crap. Yeah. And so I'm like, wow, this is actually a really good product. The sound is awesome, and they're actually comfortable. For some reason, my ears are sensitive, and they're not sensitive with Raycons. Look, guys, whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you, you want what you're listening to to be what you are listening to, not what your roommates or your friends or the other room. Or I don't want to hear other things. I get so distracted with my ADD. You want to listen to what you are listening to when you put on headphones. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds, but before you drop hundreds of dollars on a pair, 
please check out wireless earbuds from Raycon. Guys, you already know Raycon earbuds started at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds in the market, and that they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so freaking comfortable, perfect for conference calls or binging podcasts. And unlike some of the other wireless options that are out there, Ryan, mm. Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems to distract anyone during video calls. The company was founded by Ray J and celebrities like, I got to say Brandy because, mm -hmm. you know, I love Brandy. Yeah. And uh, Melissa Etheridge. I mean, they're obsessed with Raycons, including all my friends who aren't celebrities. They're obsessed with them. So now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash IOU. That's buyraycon.com slash IOU for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash IOU. This episode of Inside of You is brought to you by the Jordan Harbinger Show. It's Jordan Harbinger. I don't know if you guys have heard this podcast, but it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, you know, as I talk to guests and get information out of them that people can kind of chew on and, and go, wow, I got something out of that. I think this guy does the same thing. In fact, he does the same thing. And he's just got a lot of great, he's a good interviewer and he's got some great guests. Uh, Danny Trejo, uh, inmate number one, which is fantastic. Um, and one I really like is my future versus my special needs sister. Uh, just the title right there says, wow, this is interesting because you kind of get it, but you you, you got to listen to that. Uh, I really enjoy it. And I, and, I, and I learned something from it. And uh, it's the Jordan Harbinger Show. Search the Jordan Harbinger Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, or go to jordanharbinger.com slash subscribe. This show covers a wide range of topics through weekly interviews, heavy hitting guests, and there are a ton of episodes rooted in the business and tech space. The Jordan Harbinger show is, uh, you know, the one constant is, is Jordan's ability to pull useful pieces of advice from his guests. And, and that's sort of what I do in a, in a different way. Guys, we really enjoy the show and we know you will too. Search the Jordan Harbinger show. That's H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The Jordan Harbinger show. Are you excited for this being, I mean, are you going to miss the show like hell? You're going to miss, you, I can tell you're already I missing literally. it. I've cried every day for a week. You not, really, not, you genuinely not, cry. Yeah, I, I read the script every day. Um, <laughs> and even just moments on set, you know, we have, we're, we're filming our last episode. So every now and again, we're at a location. It's like, oh, I've been here for 15 years. I remember this place. I remember where I played with my dog and this and that. And then it's like, okay, this is the last time we'll be at this location. And I think to myself, there's a possibility I'm trying to be aware of but I'll never make this drive again. We just shot um, kind of up Sea to Sky Highway uh, last week. And on the drive down, it was our last day at that location. And I was like, oh my God, like I might never make this drive again. I hope I do. I hope I do. But I'm just preparing myself to go like, I might never see this. And I, you know, I would go to Whistler on weekends and go skiing or go hiking or whatever the, the season was. Um, I'm really excited. It's very bittersweet. And Ackles and I talk every day about it and, it's long days, you know, we have to finish what we have to finish. We don't have any pickup shots. It's not like, hey, we'll come back in a month because we'll have to quarantine for two more weeks and it, it doesn't make sense uh, financially. Did they schedule the last, very last final moment between you and Jensen together so you're in the last shot before you both wrap at the same time? Is that what's gonna happen? I'll say this. I'm trying to figure out the- I'm saying like as two actors, because they shoot out of order, are you guys going to be together on the final take of the final the day? La the last time Sam and Dean see each other is the last time Jared and Jensen see each other, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying what the last scene is going to be, but the last moment I have on camera with Jensen and vice versa will be the last filming moment I have 
on camera with Jensen. And how emotional. I could just see two of you good looking fucks just falling together. Oh my God, <laughs> sweating. You got the sauna. You guys got the sauna blanket over both of you. You're just crying your fucking eyes out. Step in here. Uh, it's already been emotional, man. You know what's funny is that um is that he and I both, and you know this, you worked with him and you know me for a long time. And he and I both are so committed to these characters. You know, he plays Dean Winchester. I play Sam Winchester. Like, I love Sam Winchester. He's been my close friend for 15 years. And I want to do him justice. So I'm focusing really hard. I'm trying to focus really hard to make sure that if Sam cries, it's Sam tears, not Jared's. Mm. Like, at, at, at my heart, like, I, it wasn't necessarily that I wanted to be famous or I wanted to be in a J-Bot magazine or whatever. I want to tell stories. And I want to tell Sam's story. And I, had a, I, I did a Christmas movie of season one with, uh, you know, Jason Ciccini. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Tom Stanton, a good guy. Yeah, of course. He's, he's my dear, dear friend, and I hope he comes down to Austin with Hilarious. me. Hilarious. But um, uh, he did the movie with me, and there was a scene I had with Peter O'Toole, who's one of my oh. awesome idols, and I, I, I so badly wanted to impress him, impress the director, that I ended up getting to a place where I kept crying after they called cut, and Peter was like, Michael, to the director, he's like, can, can, can Jared and I have a moment? And Michael's like, absolutely. So he told everybody to take 10 minutes and go get the crafty or something. And Peter O'Toole comes with me and says, hey, that was wonderful. That was phenomenal. Those are Tom's tears. I played a character named Thomas Kincaid, Tom. And so he's like, those are Tom's tears. Don't steal them. Save them for Tom. And from wow. a guy who like went to RADA, you know, eight-time Oscar nominee, I'm not, Lawrence of Arabia, my favorite year. Like he, I was like, I'll be damned. Like what a great, what a great thing. And he was 80 at the time. I was 23 or 24 um, and he is, he is Peter O'Toole. I love um, it. And I was like, what a cool thing to say. Like, remember, I'm glad you got there. That was wonderful. Those aren't your tears. When they call action, if Tom cries, give them to him. Wow. But those aren't and just like so a little wonderful. thing that just went so, oh, you were like, Good. I've had that. And it's always from veteran actors, John Glover. Um, I don't. Yes. I go, I can't, I don't know what's going on, John. I can't like, oh, uh, well, just listen to me. Just listen, listen to me. Let's just talk. Let's just, just, it's just me and you. It's just your dad. It's your dad. And I looked at him. I go, oh my God. Roll cameras. I got it. Yeah. And then I go and I just listen. And I'm like, what? I forgot to listen. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, I got to ask you. Cause it's kind of funny now, I guess. Yeah. When yeah. you got, when you got arrested. Yes. You know, because uh, then you came on set and uh, Jensen had you in shackles walking on set. They were going to get jumpsuits, orange jumpsuits for the whole crew, yes. but they couldn't get them in time. Uh, yes. You know, look, I've always known you're like, you know, you're one of those guys. You always have someone's back. You always said you're a boy. You're a, you know, yeah. you have fun. You get a huge heart. You're loving. But, you know, someone pisses you off or you get a little, you get a little rowdy, right? For sure. sure. So yeah. what happened? I don't even know what happened. Uh, I, uh, this is not an excuse. I don't entirely know what happened either other than reading the reports and, uh, um, did you believe the reports? I have to. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, uh, long story short, the, the, um, the cliff notes are, I, we were filming in Vancouver and we flew, I think we filmed to like five or 6 AM and flew to Austin and we had a double date that night. Jen and I had a double date with our buddies, Walker and Sandy, uh, shout out Walker and Sandy. I went to dinner and I hadn't slept. I hadn't had anything to eat. It's now like 8 p.m. And we had a friend who had opened up a bar and it was it was the weekend before Halloween. So it's like when everybody gets dressed up. Um, and so we went to a buddy's bar. So we had we had dinner and we, you know, we all split a bottle of wine, had a cocktail. At this point in time, I haven't eaten, I haven't slept. And I think I was a little bit more affected than I maybe wanted to admit. And so we walked down the block um, and went to a, a buddy who had opened up a new bar. And I own a few bars in Austin and the community of bar owners kind of small. You see each other and like, Hey, welcome. Like, how do you like my new place? And we had gone and, um, and, you know, we get there and the, the owner is like, Hey, welcome. How do you like it? And there were a couple of bachelorette parties and they were fans of the show. And they're like, let's buy you a drink and this and that. And I think I had too much to drink and uh, too little to eat and sleep. And I, I legitimately don't recall what happened other than what I've seen in the video. But I think what happened, having seen in the video, I think what happened is I just was blacked out, didn't know what was going on. And I think I, I saw me get pulled down by my hair in the video. And then I thought, I think I thought I was in a fight. You know, Jensen and I got jumped season one outside of- uh, I remember Lucy that. Brown on Richards. <laughs> And I think it was, I think my, my, my head must have, I haven't had a drink since I was sort of like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this away because I, 
that is not who I am. Anybody who knows me knows that's the absolute opposite. You know, if somebody's going to hurt my child, obviously I'm going to protect them. Right. I don't know what happened that night. Well, it's and not like you get in fights every month. This is like, you know, two and 20 oh, years. No, 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 no. This is not like, I, you know, it was very humbling. I guess I never really talked about it. It's very humbling to go. That's like, I judge these people who I read about, like, blah, 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 gets into a bar fight. I'm like, what an idiot. You're a celebrity. Like, what's wrong with you? Don't take drinks from people you don't know. And I was like, whoa, I just took drinks from somebody I don't know. And I don't know if I was drugged or whatever, but I, I, I completely, I don't recall what happened other than what I read in the police reports. Um, yeah, it's pretty humbling, man. It's pretty. Uh, so you haven't had a drink since? No. Nah. And do people, like, you, you always think about that if somebody, something happens. I mean, I'm sure people will probably come after you for money, right? You would think. So here's, here's the worst part of the story is I knew the guys. It was my bar. I knew them, you know? And so luckily they were like, okay, I don't know what the fuck just happened, but that's not Jared. We know him well enough to know that, like, maybe he was drugged or something. And so, um, so I talked with them and, and thank God they were like, hey, man, like that was really messed up, but we know that's not you. You know, we've known you for plenty long. We've known friends of you. We've known people who just randomly ran into the street. You were really kind to. So we know that's nothing to do with who you are as a human being. And, you know, we're good. Um, so I guess that's yeah. a blessing. Yeah. So, so it happened at your I mean, bar. Of course, I, not, I guess that's a blessing. That's a huge blessing that I, I, I'm not that guy. Well, you're I'm, amongst but, people who know you, who knew you and know you're not that guy. And you, you, for all these years, you haven't been. So to ha it happened in front of people you know, as embarrassing as it might have been, at yeah. least they could say, that's not him. I know yeah, that. Yeah, like what he, in the some, world happened, he's just, This is just not him. I've seen that before. I've seen that with like a somebody like, you, you, you think about things like, you're like, no, 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 I don't believe that. That's that's not that guy. It's just never yeah, happened. I've never seen. It was surreal. It was surreal. I saw, I ended up seeing security footage because I had to watch it. Was it hard to watch? Yeah. Yeah, really hard to watch. Because you're watching it and you're like, that's me. And you don't know, you don't see what you're doing. And that's why I was like, I, I can, I'm never going there again. I'm never risking going there again. And I don't do drugs. You know, I, I obviously enjoyed wine and stuff like that, but I was like, I've never been to a point where you're literally seeing yourself on a screen. You know, obviously if you're acting and you see an episode of Gilmore Girls Supernatural, you're like, oh yeah, I remember memorizing those lines. I remember blocking. But you see yourself at 1 a.m. or whatever outside of a bar on a security footage. And you're like, no, that, that doesn't, it's it's almost like Twilight Zone. Well, that had to be you had to be drugged. I'm not an excuse kind of guy. Like I hate excuses. My dad was very much like, you know, oh, dad, I didn't have time. What'd you do between one a.m. and five a.m.? I slept, so you did have time. Like I'm a, I'm a no excuses kind of guy. Right. I don't like that excuse, but that's never happened to me. You know, I didn't drink. I've had more to drink and not blacked out. Um, and I don't know what happened. I, I I broke my own rule of like, and I tell Genevieve, and we have a daughter, and I'm like, you know, never take a drink. Somebody pours for you. And that night, for whatever reason, I was like, oh, thanks. It's a bachelorette party. It's my friend's bar. Like, nothing could have happened. And, and, and by the way, sense. this is how much, this is what I'm thinking. I'm not just saying this as a friend. But especially if you're at a, a place where it's yours and it's all and people you know and you're, that's, yeah. you're, it's not like you're at some random place where there's nobody you know. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. You, if you were more aware of what was going on, you wouldn't have done that if you had any kind of, you know, it just, that's. What I, whatever. Yeah, whatever happened, I, I, I still, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's definitely informed my life since then. You know, that was ten months ago, and um, you know, I just was like, I'm gonna stop drinking, so I stopped, and I've been talking to my psychiatrist a lot about it and where I might have stemmed from and what might have happened outside of whatever yeah. may have been poured and anything I had to drink or eat. Um, well, I'm glad. Like, I'm glad. Yeah, you're... I hit panic mode. I thought I was getting attacked. You know, I thought I was getting shoved and pushed. And I think I. I, I, this is wild ass guess. Like, again, I'm not proud of it, but I don't remember. I don't remember it. Um, I'm certainly not proud of it. I'm humiliated by it. Uh, but yeah, I assume I just thought I was going to get beat up. You know, I've been jumped before many times by a bunch of guys and you're like, well, if they beat me up, they're going to get me on the ground and kick my head into a curb, like American history X or something. Like I, I can't, I need to protect myself. And I assume that's where I was where i was thinking you know what i was thinking right um but yeah it was a it was a luckily you know that's in the past where it will stay you know and absolutely hey let's talk about something really good and then yeah. and by the way you know it's it's human it's like 
you know, celebrities, friends, athletes, they come on this podcast. People don't want to hear about everybody's life is perfect and no one makes mistakes. And, oh, I don't get anxiety and I don't get. So for you to get up here and be honest about what you just fucking talked about, if anybody has an issue with that, it's like, don't listen to the show because you're vulnerable and you're real. And you're like, Hey, this is what happened. You don't make excuses. You're like, you know, embarrassed. you're embarrassed by it. You make changes, yeah. things happen. And you know, uh, so that's what I'll say about that. But, um, that's right. Texas Ranger, Texas yeah. Walker. Okay. Yeah. Walker. I always say Texas Ranger. I know you do. Texas uh, Walker. Are you excited about the show? I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. When do you start? Um, well, uh, before the pandemic, we were going to finish uh, Supernatural on April 5th and then start Walker April 20th. And then obviously, you know, global pandemic that's like unlike anything we've ever seen in, for several generations. Um, and so right now, I think we're set, to, we're set to finish Supernatural on September 10th. And then we were supposed to start Walker on September 23rd, but that got pushed because uh, we need more time to build, I think. So it, it's going to be hopefully sometime in October. We start in Austin. How many episodes? I don't know. I, again, I don't know. Um, I think it was supposed to, I think we got a 13 episode pickup. Don't quote me on this. I probably should know this. Um, <laughs> I think we got a 13 pickup, but then I think because of everything going on, it'll just depend as you well know, and maybe some of your uh, listening viewing audience doesn't know TV shows, episode of TV shows usually shoot from July to April. So if we can't start till uh, October, as of now, late October, then if we did the same amount of episodes, we would shoot like in the July or August, which means if we got picked up for a season two, then there'd be overlap. So I, I don't know if, I don't know. I think that's going to be at the, at the uh, mercy of a lot of different networks like ABC, Fox, CBS, NBC, CW. Like, I feel like they're all going to have to go like, Hey guys, let's all agree on like a 10 episode season for 2020, like a COVID season. Let's do right. a short season and get back to normal moving forward. But again, God knows, man. You love Whether to work. Like, You're just like Jensen. You guys just have to work. You want to work. You love yeah. acting. You love it. And I love that. It's great. Yeah. All right. This is real quick. This is called shit talking with Rosamond. It's quick. This is rapid fire. Tom's asks, will there be a supernatural movie coming out in the future? And would you do one? I hope so. And absolutely. Steph A. Are you hoping to channel your inner Chuck Norris for Walker, or are you going to make the whole role your own interpretation? Uh, my my Walker has zero to do with with Chuck's Walker. I did watch Chuck Norris. I mean, I grew up in Texas, and Walker Texas Ranger was obviously a massive show, and I watched it. But this is a brand new character, brand new story, and brand new era. So, Brand asked me, is he related to that guy at all? None, no, is just it, a similar name. His name's Walker. His name He's is a Corey Texas Walker. Ranger, but he has nothing to do with Walker, Texas Ranger from he, yesteryear. Well, Cordell, Cordell's the new Walker, Texas Cordell. Ranger. Cordell. Nothing to do with that. Uh, All right, good. Uh, Leanne, have you uh, had any uh, paranormal experiences of your own that you would like to share? <laughs> That's oh, well, a random well, one. I, I certainly I have seen some things and experienced some things that I can't explain. But as far as specifically going, like, there was a time where this happened, uh, definitively no, but possibly yes. All right. Rachin, have you talked with Chuck Norris about his about, about this at all? Is he supportive of you taking over his iconic role? Even though I know it's a different role, have you, have, have you had his blessing or have you talked to him? Well, he, uh, great question. So I have not talked to him directly. We've had, I guess our people have talked, whatever that means. Um, but he had to give his blessing because he still co-owned the rights to the, uh, the story, the product, you know? So he owned, he was part of the, uh, EP group and he had some ownership in Walker, Texas Ranger. So we had to get his blessing to, to create a new version of it. So I know we have his blessing, but I don't know what his involvement will or won't be. You know, well, he's, yeah. he's, I think he's 80 something now. I'm sure you can still beat my ass. Let but. me give you an example. This is, this is the phone conversation. Yeah. Uh, Chuck. Yeah. Hey, it's Ron over here at uh, Warner brothers. Uh, yeah. Listen, uh, so they're redoing the show sort of, it's kind of a new thing. Uh, yeah, come on, hurry up. I got to tell you. Yeah. Listen, we're doing, uh, the show, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. I get paid. Well, yeah, you own part of it. All right, fuck it. Do it. Does he have to pee a lot or was that just, uh, he just wanted track? to get off the phone. Chuck <laughs> wanted to get off the phone and get his numb chucks and take a shit. I think personally that he probably, if, if somebody goes, 
you were the part owner of that. They want to redo it. Uh, do I get paid? Well, fuck yeah. Why are you asking me? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go do it. Whatever. Time. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. But fair enough. enough. Uh, last question. Daniel M., if you had a chance, which superhero could you see yourself playing? Because you're a big guy. You're, you're a handsome fellow. What, what would it be? Thanks, man. I'm a, I'm a big guy. Uh, <laughs> I, I've heard Nighthawk would be a good fit for me, which would be fun. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I've seen some mock-ups of Nighthawk. Did you test screen? Uh, you, didn't you test screen for uh, Lex Luthor or for no, Superman. Superman? Clark. Yeah, not the Smallville. I test. I, I screen tested for the movie in 04 when it was oh. McGee. Yeah, I was doing House of Wax and I flew from, they flew me from Australia to LA to screen test. I put the suit on and everything. They took my phone away so I could take pictures. Um, Do you know, by the way, that Jensen gets the car? We both get a car. You get the car too? We both get a car, yeah. It was in your contract as well. It wasn't in either of our contracts. It was a gift from them. But the funny thing is also, I'm the I'm actually the car guy. Like I, I my first car ever was a 69 Camaro. I still have it. I also had a 66 Mustang. He had like Broncos and stuff. Um, but I'm the car guy. Like when I see a 67 Impala, I'm like, okay, what's the block? Like, was it a, was it a board and stroke? Got some rotary girders on here. You got uh, yeah, Edel Brock you know, intakes. Got, got, everybody needs rotary girders. Uh, yeah, but I, I grew up like Cliffy and I, who works in the show, <laughs> he and I have taught cars for years. My favorite car ever is a 67 Corvette, my dad's favorite car. But I have like car books and parts books from when I was fucking seven years you old. You could build and an I engine. Had, you could rebuild an engine. I cannot. I can, I can tinker. With the carburetor engine, you know, I, I know spark plugs. I, I can change my carburetor. oil. I can change a tire. I can change my oil. I can change oil. I can change oil in a classic car. I mean, these days, yeah. you need a lift system. You need a fine tooth comb to get in there. But you give me an old late 60s uh, muscle car, and I can I can fiddle. You know, I can change. I, I used to keep a fan belt and uh, some spark plugs in my 69 Camaro that I drove to high school. I still have the car. Like I, I, I am the classic car guy. Like that's. So, so you're both fun. getting a car. So the question is. Oh, no, that wasn't contractual. That was right. phenomenal that Warner Brothers did for us. Right. Okay. It was phenomenal. Like, hey, they probably could have sold the cars for a million dollars a piece. I mean, I'm throwing out a number, but those cars are very valuable. And Peter sure. Roth uh, said basically, thank you guys so much for doing such a wonderful job for so long. We'd like you guys to have this. And Dean Winchester is the car guy, but Jared Padalecki is the car guy. By the way, that show made so much money for that network. I hope so. It was a great show. Yeah, they great it. show. They deserve it. Absolutely. Look, dude, this is awesome. I, I honestly, I, I want to. I wish I could talk to you every week, but you know, it's like how many. Yeah, you know, you. but this is awesome. I, I wish you the yeah. best. It's it's so exciting. I mean, this how many years? Fifteen. However, oh, fifteen, but fifteen is part one and two. So uh, I turned thirty-seven and thirty-eight on season fifteen. Cause it got split up. Wow. So season 15, it's like a show that you can't get rid of us. Well, you told me you and Jensen both were like, well, come up and play with us, man. Come up. We'll get, let's, we'll get you on. And I never did. And I'm like, you know, if you guys do a freaking movie of it, they got to find something for well, me. Listen, man, Gilmore girls, uh, did, I did five seasons. They did seven. And then 10 years later, they did a Netflix reboot. So movie or reboot, Give me a call. I'm I uh I'm in, man. It's gonna I happen. Love the I love the show. I love the fandom, the family. So dude, I love you, man. This has been fantastic. Love you back, man. All right. Yeah, good to hear from you. Good to see your face. You too, buddy. I love Jared, don't you? Good dude. He is a good dude. He's <laughs> a good dude. That fight story, I could just tell he was uncomfortable in a in a sort of like I don't know, it felt like he did want to kind of talk about it. Got it off his chest a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he was definitely embarrassed by it. But it's sort of good to, you know, get it out there. I think so. Uh, I just love his his honesty. And I love that they're both getting cars. Yeah, that's fun, right? Uh, shout out to all my Patreons out there. Thank you again. If you, if you like the show, again, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Spread it to the world. And again, if you're still listening, and you I, at this point, I think if you're listening and, if, uh, you know, and you're a Supernatural fan, you came here because you're a Jared fan or a Jensen fan, eh, stick around, man. Listen to the other episodes. I think you'll like it. I hope you'll like it. And uh, big shit out to all the patrons. Big shit out? Big shit out. Did I say shit out? <laughs> big like shit, shit out. <laughs> Time for the shit out with the patrons. <laughs> Thanks to all you folks. Uh, you, I mean, you know what you do. You, uh, you're wonderful. 
Nancy D, Mary B, Leah S, Trisha F, Sarah V, Lil Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Lauren G, Nico P, Angelina G Lee, Robin S, Jerry W, Emily K, Bob B, Robert I, Jason W, Stephen J, Kristen K, Amelia O, Allison L, Tom N, Jess N, no, Jess J, Lucas M, Raj, Emily, Emily S, we know who you are. CJP, Samantha M, Hamza, Jennifer N, Jackie P, Stacy L, Carly H, Jennifer S, Janelle B, Tab of the 272, not to be confused with Tab of the 273, Kimberly E, Crystal H, Mike E, Marissa N, Ramira, Beth B, Chris F, Sarah F, Chad W, Leanne P, Rachel C, Ray A, Maya P, Megan J, Jennifer C, Maddie S, Tiffany I, Kendrick F, Ashley E, Margie M, Thomas T, Matt W, Belinda N, Benjamin R, Lisa J, Kevin V, Robert S, Joy W, James R, Chris H, Snow R, Noah K, Sean V, and Oshborn H. I think it's Oshborn. Is it Osbjorn? Osbjorn. Uh, guys, thank you again for listening. I, I, I hope you had a great time. Uh, keep it up. And if uh, you like this one, there's a lot of others to go back and listen to and get caught up and make sure you subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, the store, Inside of You store, uh, we got new shirts. We've got tons of great stuff. I even have a couple horror hats left, a couple sweatshirts left, mugs, autograph mugs, all that jazz. And uh, band shirts, Rosenbaumanddanson.com, Rosenbaum and Danson. D-A-N-S-O-N.com. You can get band shirts. They're really cool. So uh, that's it. Thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you. Have an amazing week. Be safe. Um, Do something kind for someone this week if you can. Whatever it is. An act of kindness. Open up the door for someone. You know. Tell someone they look nice. Unless you're the boss at work. I could get you in trouble. Don't taxidermy your dog and tell your family you love them. I guess that's it. All right. All my love. See ya.